Atlantic salmon is a top seafood choice for Americans. Unfortunately, the United States imports around 96% of Atlantic salmon to meet consumer demand. There is both an urgent need as well as an opportunity to increase domestic salmon aquaculture development in the United States. Consequently, in the last five years, the U.S. has witnessed a surge of investments in land-based, domestically grown Atlantic salmon, utilizing recirculating aquaculture systems, or RAS, platforms. An estimated $2 billion has been committed to, or planned for, investment in the development and construction of land-based Atlantic salmon operations across the nation. Although this sector is showing high interest and investment, there remains important bottlenecks and barriers that need to be overcome to support the sustainable growth and industry development. In 2019, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's National Sea Grant funded the Recirculating Aquaculture Salmon Network, or RASN, a coordinated national, public-private, and federal consortium of experts established to help build capacity for this booming industry. RASN is the first of its kind public-private collaborative network and a hub of multidisciplinary expertise in land-based aquaculture and salmon technologies. Through strong industry and stakeholder support, RASN is facilitating the growth of environmentally sustainable and economically feasible Atlantic salmon production in the U.S. So excited about when we wrote this proposal is that we could do something so different with this new industry. It would be so revolutionary it would just overwhelm everybody else. I mean, it would be a leadership, it would be a model for other ways we do food production. That's what's so exciting about this proposal. The activities and deliverables of RASN are stakeholder driven, a key component to RASN's foundation and mission. The guiding principle of the network is to understand industry gaps, impediments, and needs. This is what the industry uh, wants to see done in terms of research and overcoming bottlenecks and, and closing gaps. It's, it's a huge industry that we are expected to help uh, succeed. Annual workshops provide opportunity to engage with stakeholders, bringing in national and global experts in RAS technologies and Atlantic salmon for their input and guidance. The first annual workshop, hosted by the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point, Northern Aquaculture Demonstration Facility, located in Bayfield, Wisconsin, was in December 2019. I'm so excited to see everybody here and to meet everybody. I've been in this industry for 30 years, and uh, I have to say this is probably one of the most exciting things I've ever seen. Attendees included individuals from around the country as well as internationally and represented a variety of experts from private industry to state and federal representatives in research, education, and extension. This is an incredible important first step to get a group of people together, share information, get to know each other. Together, the group addressed challenges in research, technology, economics, education, outreach, workforce development, and extension. One of the key goals that I feel is important for all of us is to push the envelope so that we're producing more than 8% of domestic seafood. We need to increase seafood production domestically. And for that, well, the fish are what they eat and the efficiency of feed is critical. So, you know, the feed should be in alignment with us to help growth. And that comes with consistency of feed and the choices of feed. We want to also domesticate our feed ingredient and feed sources. RES has got a really good story, and so we want to make sure we are consistent and aligned with this. A couple of our sub-objectives can kind of be lumped into precision aquaculture. That's kind of a buzzword these days, precision agriculture in general. But I, I think this is really on the rise in terms of just being able to analyze what's going on in their populations and providing um, farmers with, with real-time data. Uh, we definitely need uh, domestic food stock egg supply and we're intending to work closely with the domestic egg supply producer and then have hopefully um, feedback on how the germplasm performs in our systems. I think genetics is one component of early maturation, but we need to understand the mechanisms um, so that we're not breeding a fish that all of a sudden goes into these RAS systems and has an adverse effect. So 
Uh, I'd say understanding early maturation is a, a big challenge going forward. We want to continue to develop and deploy vaccines for the different species. Every species has a different sort of pathogen profile. We do have land-based facilities where things get in, so obviously addressing those, coming up with novel uh, probiotics. I think a lot of the probiotics that are out there have been sort of terrestrial ones that have been adapted to um, the aquatic realm. So we are obviously using metagenomics and looking at some novel aquatic probiotics that would really work in, um, in a variety of species. And the engineering solutions specifically to reduce energy costs. So that's something I've heard for years, that that's a key area for grass systems to becoming more profitable, is how do you get that energy cost down? Ultimately, we have a tool that can help um, understand how the large investments that you are all making will generate returns under uncertainty. I think it's going to be a very great, uh, a great product, not only for folks that have already made substantial investments, but for new, uh, you know, entrants into this market as well, who are making decisions whether to invest the money and what those expected returns could be and how those returns would vary depending upon factors that are influenced by global markets. What core concepts and skill sets do these training programs need to have to give that foundation so that we can hire someone out of that program and then give them the additional training for our decisions and our facility and our protocols? Where's your entry point? Where do you envision your entry point being for your workforce development? And where do you envision your entry point being for your content understanding of RAS with SAM? So if you decide that early on, you're going to have a lot easier time getting to your workforce development program, whatever that's going to be. I think the workforce development needs to be better articulated about where we can go and what the industry really needs and what the universities or the public school systems can provide. Outreach to a whole set of stakeholders which will make this uh, RAS really grow in this country successfully and that it will make the industry and investment partners more comfortable with growing the industry. I think we heard a lot about the research needs and research outcomes. Economic analysis is going to be really key and then really getting that into something that's digestible by the rest of the community will be important. So, so I'm excited about the extension component um, and we're ready to move forward. The information gathered from stakeholders is being used to create a fluid white paper and eventually into the final deliverable, a national strategic plan or industry roadmap that will include an extensive analysis of the status of the industry, including projected growth, research needs and priorities, as well as mechanisms to promote public-private partnerships, technology transfer, and community engagement. For more information on this project and deliverables, please visit rasn.org.